Three differences between virtual and in-person networking, besides the obvious. All you have to do is look around and you'll see that technology is on the rise and there are more social networking sites being created every day. Therefore, it's no surprise that people are switching from in-person networking to virtual networking. The debate between the two has been going on for years and there's enough supporting information for both sides to argue a case for either. However, the ultimate question is whether in-person networking has unique value that virtual networking lacks. In this presentation, we'll talk about three differences between virtual and in-person networking. Presenter must master the tech. When it comes to virtual networking events, the host must be familiar with the tech that's being used. Additionally, the platform needs to be kept in mind when the content is being put together. Finally, the host must create and practice presenting the information in a way that works with the platform. One of the first things that a presenter needs to know is that they can't simply upload the information from an in-person event and expect it to work in a virtual setting. The presenter and the attendees need to adjust to the platform. After all, everything runs differently online. Things that may have been easy in a face-to-face -face setting are much more complicated in a virtual one. Therefore, the presenter needs to take time to plan, script and practice the session more than they would for an in-person event. Additionally, presenters must create an environment that is comfortable for attendees, which may mean teaching them how to use the tools that are available on the platform. The time required for activities in a virtual setting versus a physical one is different. Intros tend to go more quickly online when all the attendees have to do is type up a blurb in the chat box instead of spending several minutes on verbal introductions. On the other hand, starting the event may take a little more time than an in-person event would. Don't expect attendees to log on at 10am and you begin right at 10am. They need time to test the tools and make sure that they're not having technical difficulties. You can use this time to allow attendees to make introductions or present a poll or a question for them to answer. This will indicate that the event will be interactive. Include opportunities to engage. When it comes to in-person events, the interaction between the attendees and the presenter, or each other, seems to happen organically. However, this is lacking in the virtual environment. In order to make sure that attendees stay engaged, presenters need to ask for feedback and include opportunities for interaction. These opportunities may include typing poll questions in the chat box or pose a question to attendees so that they can answer in the chat box. Multitasking. In a virtual event, there are a lot of things going on at one time. The presenter is likely to be presenting the information, fielding questions that are coming via chat, engaging with attendees and more. This will most likely require switching back and forth between screens. Unfortunately, Multitasking is not an ability that most people have, but it's a skill that can be improved. However, presenters must understand their limits and plan the event accordingly. They must be realistic about what they can and can't do. For example, it's easy to have everyone type their questions into the chat box. However, it's difficult for one person to move into subgroups and have private conversations. Conclusion as you can see, there are several major differences between virtual and in-person networking events. A virtual event does allow for more participation, but presenters must keep these things in mind. Three things to do after a virtual networking event. You've reached the end of your virtual networking event. You may believe that the hard part is over, but the truth is some of the most important parts of the event are about to commence. After all, a good online event lives forever in several ways. They're more than just online versions of physical events. They provide their own long-lasting value in content, community and opportunities. Therefore, we need to change the way we build these events, prepare for them, conduct them and the things we do after the session is over. Transform Area to Knowledge Hub Chances are your virtual event provided valuable content to your attendees. Instead of simply letting it fade, you need to make this content last. Take the event area and transform it into a hub for visitors to come and learn more. 
be sure to make it known that this is what you're doing. Additionally, make sure that you set it up to be user-friendly and searchable. Catalog the content according to the main topics and build campaigns around it to target the appropriate groups. Content should be published and promoted on a variety of online outlets. Then, repurpose the content to create other assets. For example, turn your video clips into written blog posts and turn blog posts and articles into videos. Make sure to research SEO to ensure that you're utilizing the appropriate keywords within descriptions and articles. This will improve the exposure of your Knowledge Hub. Then, make sure to invite members of your organization to add to it and tell others about it. Maintain contact with attendees. Your Knowledge Hub should be more than a place where people come to get information about the topic. It should be an active community that begins with the original attendees and speakers but it's also inviting to others who are interested in the topic. As industry leaders begin to share their thoughts and provide assistance to each other, there will be additional networking opportunities that will open up. This community will also spark new ideas for future events and assets for the Knowledge Hub. The information you publish will gather interest, but the community is what will keep your flame burning. Of course, you should keep in mind that maintaining engagement within the community isn't easy. Therefore, it should be a priority, and adequate resources should be allocated in order to make it a successful venture. If managed properly, you'll aim towards high attendance and an easy process for hiring speakers in the future. Analyse your numbers. Taking the time to analyse your analytics will help you get a better handle on your target audience. This information will tell you what content worked and what didn't, which will help you build your follow-up and determine which videos you should develop into full articles and perhaps even build a series around. It will also direct you to a specific focus for the community. The numbers you gather and the discernment you get from them will help you make the next event a bigger success and will allow you to create personalized experiences for your interest groups. Thanks to the tech nature of virtual events, it is possible to make the information personalized. However, this does require that you have a reliable database. Once you have your plan worked out, the data should also help with your marketing and targeting efforts. Conclusion There's much more to a virtual event than the event itself. Even after it's over, there's still much work to do. This work will help you make sure that the information stays alive and can be accessed by attendees and anyone else interested in the future. Additionally, it can help you with ensuring that future events are a success. Five tips for overcoming the awkwardness when virtual networking for business. According to the experts, it's completely understandable to feel a bit awkward in certain situations. We all feel a bit nervous before heading into a room full of people that we don't know. Unfortunately, social awkwardness can result in anxiety and avoidance for some people. Virtual networking does make it a bit easier since you're not face-to-face -face with others, but it can still be a bit uncomfortable. In this presentation, we'll discuss five tips for overcoming awkwardness when virtual networking for business. Define your audience. In order to ensure that your virtual networking event is successful, you need to begin the process with your audience in mind. Think about who your audience is and how they're related. What is it that they're trying to achieve? Who are they like to meet at the event? The first thing you must do is determine if your attendees have already met or if they're strangers. This will have to be the determining factor on how your event is structured. If they already know each other, you don't need to provide as much structure as you would with a group of strangers. Second, you must think about their goals and the reasons for attending the event. These will vary, but usually align with one or more of the following. To get support, to discover vendors or consultants to work with, solve problems, become a mentor, find a mentor. Connect with future collaborators. Prepare for a job change. Make friends or spot future trends. Once you've done this, you can design your event. 
design event based on desired outcome. A successful virtual event will be designed with the outcome in mind. When you understand your audience and their motivations, you can determine the best way to run your event. If it's feasible, put together a test group to try out various activities and determine what works and what doesn't before the event. This will keep you from including activities that will be a waste of time and ensure that you include activities that will provide value. Allow attendees choice stroke control. Give your attendees the ability to choose the conversations they want to participate in, allowing them to come and go as they please. This gives them the independence to pursue areas they're interested in and leave activities that don't contribute to their goals. Put limits on group sizes. When creating virtual events, it's easy to allow group sizes to get too large. This makes it difficult for some attendees to join the conversation and dilutes their ability to have meaningful conversations with others. According to experts, three to four is the magic number for supporting meaningful, spontaneous conversations. This allows attendees to feel like they can contribute to the conversation, but you should also make sure that the group size reflects the anticipated outcome of your event. If your attendees are coming to collaborate, larger groups might be better. Create structure with icebreakers. Icebreakers are a great way to bring structure to these events. At the beginning of the event, when people are still logging on, pose a conversation starter to the room. It can be a fun, lightweight question or a deep, meaningful one. The attendees will be glad that they have the opportunity to discuss these topics. One benefit of these icebreakers is that they can be the start of beautiful friendships, partnerships and so much more. When you choose them carefully based on your audience and their goals, they can create an experience that is truly memorable. Conclusion Social awkwardness is perfectly normal, even in virtual networking situations. However, it's possible to make these situations easier with these tips. Organisers can use these tips to structure their events in such a way that everyone feels welcome and can get past the awkwardness of a new situation. Plus, this will help organisers ensure that attendees can meet their objectives and interact with others in meaningful ways. 5 Tips to Prepare for a Successful Virtual Networking Event In the past few years, virtual networking has increased in popularity. Since they're not bound to a specific geographical location, a virtual event allows for greater connections and can be accessed without leaving your home or office. However, due to the fact that they're informal and convenient, there's a bit more skill and prep required than for an in-person event. In this tutorial, we'll give you five tips to prepare for a successful virtual networking event. Prepare. Though they are by nature, a bit more casual and relaxed, a virtual event is just as important as an in-person event. Planning a virtual event actually requires more attention and thought than an in-person event. The first thing you need to do is decide why you want to host the event. If you're a seasoned event planner, a virtual event may be an extension to what you've been doing. On the other hand, if this is new territory, you might want to think about what your goal is, who your audience is, and what a successful event looks like. Consider attending a few virtual events to find out how they're run. You'll find things you like and things you don't, which will help you to determine how you want your event to run. Have an agenda. In order to ensure that your virtual event is productive and enjoyable, you must have an agenda that considers your goals, the number of guests present, and the length of your event. The agenda needs to include what you plan to do and say and when. It's critical to keep track of your time in a virtual event. Choose your platform. Since there are so many options, choosing a platform for your event can be a bit tricky, but the good news is most of them have a free version that you can test. Choosing a platform depends on your needs, preferences and how tech-savvy you are. A quick internet search will help you find one that works for you. You must ensure that your platform is able to accommodate your agenda while also being fairly easy to use. Be sure to test the platform a few times before your event begins. Choose your host. Planning and hosting are two different roles. In some cases, the planner is the host, 
but in other cases, the planner chooses someone different to host. A great host will ensure that your goals are met and that guests will return for future events. For a virtual networking event, you need a host that can use their voice, gestures, and expressions to make guests feel welcome and appreciated. If you plan to have someone else host the event, you'll want to make sure to do a test run with them to make sure they are a good fit. Market your event. Once you have prepared for your event, prepared the agenda, chosen a platform, and chosen your host, it's time to start marketing your event. This will determine whether it will be well attended or not. You'll want to market on a variety of platforms, including LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Google Business, and anywhere else your proposed audience can be found. In addition to social media, you'll want to reach out to your contacts to talk about the event. When you personally reach out to people, they're more likely to attend. Conclusion: Networking is critical when it comes to business, and virtual networking is becoming the way to do business. After all, it allows you to connect with people all over the world. You're not limited to your own geographic area. However, there are some things you must do to make sure your event is successful. If you'll make these things a priority, it'll make a huge difference. Ten tips for growing your business through virtual networking. Until recently, most of us believed that FaceTime and other virtual calling activities were for casual communication. However, the world is changing, and virtual networking is becoming quite popular. In fact, with everyone staying so busy and always on the move, virtual networking events are more the norm than face-to-face -face events. In this presentation, we'll explain ten tips for growing your business through virtual networking. These will help you optimize the benefits from your virtual time together. Reach out to others. Most of the time, a virtual networking event will begin with a chat or icebreaker of some kind while you're waiting on everyone to join. Many times, the host will pose a question and the attendees will answer. And in some cases, attendees reach out to engage with each other while waiting. Prepare your introduction. Most of the time. Even with virtual events, there will be a moment that you have the opportunity to introduce yourself. Take some time before the meeting to come up with something that you will say. You can go ahead and type it up so you can read it, or copy and paste it when the time comes. This way, you are not struggling to come up with what to say on the spot. Prepare as if it were an in-person event. If possible. Look at the attendees who will be attending the event and decide which ones you want to connect with. If there's not a list available, decide on the types of people you want to meet and your goals for the event. Are you looking to market your products or services, or are you looking to partner with someone who has a specific skill set? The difference between an in-person event and a virtual event is that at the virtual event. Everyone will be part of the conversation. Gather contact information. Since virtual events don't really allow for one-on-one -on -one interactions, you're not going to solidify your relationship during the event. Therefore, it's necessary that you take the time to gather their contact information so you can connect with them after the event. Ask questions. If you get a chance to interact with other attendees, it's a good idea to ask questions. If you can't think of anything based on the conversation, "Why" is always a good go-to. Have a positive attitude. When you attend a virtual networking event, make sure that you bring a positive attitude with you. After all, positivity is contagious. Others will be drawn to you. Offer questions that encourage positive responses, and/or share some of the things that you've found to be inspiring. This will make everyone feel better, and they'll thank you for it. Avoid negativity. While it's true that we all need to vent once in a while, there's no place for things like that in virtual networking events. If you make negative comments, people will remember you for it. Even if everyone else attending the event agreed with you. It'll be your name that people will remember when it comes back up. Share specials. 
chances are you may be invited to share any specials your business is offering. Be sure to take advantage of this opportunity. If there is anything that you've changed to allow you to better serve your customers, make sure to mention that. Also, consider offering something special to the attendees of the event. This will create the feeling of being a VIP and they're more likely to connect with your business in the future. Write reviews. When you're done with a virtual networking event, one of the first things you can do before you follow up with your contacts is to write reviews for their businesses. Go to their social media pages and post about your interactions with the business and or their products or services. After all, reviews are beneficial for helping businesses get more customers. They also make the business owner feel good about what they're doing. Connect others. If someone brings up a need they have during the event and you know someone that can fulfill that need, make sure that you create that connection. After all, it's always a good idea to be helpful and if you help them, they may be able to help you in the future. Conclusion If you plan to participate in a virtual networking event, it's important to take it seriously because they really can be fun and positive and they can help you grow your business. Just make sure you keep these 10 tips in mind. Mastering Zoom for virtual networking success. In today's world, more companies are opting to have employees work remotely and more events are being held online to maximize participation. After all, virtual events allow for anyone to attend no matter where they are in the world. Zoom is one of the platforms that's being used. If you'd like to learn how to master Zoom, you're not alone. There are many people out there who feel the same way. In this tutorial, we will help you learn more about mastering Zoom for virtual networking success. OK, so what is Zoom? Well, Zoom is a cloud-based platform that can be used for hosting virtual meetings, whether a group meeting or a one-on-one. -on -one. This tool connects team members remotely and contains a variety of audio, video and collaboration features. Some of these features include HD video chat stroke conferencing, audio conferencing via VoIP, instant messaging, virtual backgrounds, screen sharing, ability to host video webinars. How to use Zoom. Zoom is really easy for anyone to set up and conduct virtual meetings. However, if you're new to the platform, it can be a bit tricky. The following is a step-by-step -step guide for properly using Zoom. Here are the steps for getting started with Zoom on both desktop and mobile. Desktop. Visit the website and click Sign Up in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. You'll be given two options. You can create an account using your work email or sign in with an SSO, that's a single sign-on, via Facebook or Google. If you plan to use Zoom for work, you may want to use your work email address to sign up. You'll be sent a confirmation link. Click the link to be sent to Zoom's Sign Up Assistant and sign in with your credentials. For easy access, download the desktop app stroke Zoom client from the website. Mobile. Download the Zoom app from the App Store or Play Store and follow the on-screen prompts for signing up or signing in to Zoom. The instructions are similar to those for the desktop option. Here are the instructions for easily setting up a Zoom meeting. Desktop. Start by logging into your Zoom account. Move the cursor over Host a Meeting on the top right corner of your screen and choose from the following. Video on. Video off, screen share only. You will be redirected to the Zoom app to start a meeting. At this point, you will be able to edit the settings for the meeting and send out the invitation URL to attendees. Mobile. Open the app and log into your account. Tap the New Meeting icon. Edit the settings based on your preferences. Click Start Meeting once you're done. Here are the steps for adding participants to your meeting. Desktop. 
On the New Meeting screen, click on Invite on the bottom of the screen. This will give you the option to copy URL or copy invitation. This allows you to send the invitation to attendees via text, email or IM. Another option you have is to email attendees through your preferred email service via the Zoom app. Mobile. Once you've started the meeting, click on Participants in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen to add stroke manage attendees. A window will open up where you will click Invite on the bottom left of the screen. Now you will be given the option to share the meeting details on a variety of platforms, including text, email and messaging apps. Conclusion Every day, more and more virtual events are being held. Most of these are using Zoom as the platform. Once you've used it a few times, you'll see that Zoom is actually fairly easy to use. However, it can be complicated if you've never used it before. These steps will help you get started and get you well on your way to mastering Zoom for virtual networking success. Tips for snagging introverts and extroverts while virtual networking. In recent years, virtual networking has become all the rage. More and more events are being held online. This means that you can attend an event that is all the way across the country and even on the other side of the world without ever leaving your home or office. But it's not always easy to get everyone to be engaged. When attendees engage with the event, they are more likely to enjoy the experience, which means that you will be successful. However, online engagement is a term with many different meanings. In this presentation, we will explain some tips for snagging introverts and extroverts while virtual networking. How to engage introvert attendees. Virtual events work quite well for introverts, especially if there is a lot of communication prior to the event regarding the content. In fact, the more you work on this, the more interest you'll get. Don't use headlines that can be interpreted in a variety of ways. Make sure to provide plenty of details so that you alleviate any anxiety. Be clear about participation and how their participation will add value. Encourage attendees to be involved prior to the event, which is something that can be done at their own pace. Give them time to reflect on the content. They may like to have a chance to read more about the topic at hand and look over any speaker profiles ahead of time. Send out the agenda ahead of time and keep attendees informed of any changes so that they can be in control of their experience. Keep the following list of introvert traits in mind when designing your virtual event. They enjoy, stroke, prefer solitude. They prefer not to be the centre of attention. They enjoy close one-on-one -on -one relationships. They think before speaking. They need time alone to recharge or reflect. They prefer quiet, independent environments. They focus deeply and they're seen as reserved. How to engage extroverted attendees. Of course, virtual events also work well for extroverts. Many times, event planners are attempting to replicate in-person events online, which are biased towards extroverts anyway. However, even with the bias of creating events for extroverts, there are some things that you need to keep in mind for virtual events. Extroverts can become frustrated because they're not as able to be involved as they are with in-person events. Extroverts enjoy mixing and mingling and vocalising much more than introverts, so you must find ways that they can network with other attendees. You must design your virtual event in such a way that it allows extroverts the participation they seek. Keep the following list of extrovert traits in mind when designing your virtual event. They have large social networks. They prefer attention. They think out loud. They make decisions quickly. They gain energy from others. They're outgoing, enthusiastic, and they do well in team-oriented open work settings. Conclusion you may not realise it, but you have an unconscious bias. In fact, everyone in the world does. It's about how we see the world.
Events are typically designed for extroverts because there's lots of networking, group activities, and a stimulating environment. However, by designing events this way, we automatically leave out about half of the attendees. In most cases, people are not aware of their unconscious bias, but it's there. This means that when you're planning your event, you must recognize that you're likely using your unconscious bias to make your decisions. Therefore, take some time to consider the audience data and determine what you want your outcome to be. If the two align, great. If not, you need to take a closer look to ensure that your unconscious bias isn't in control. Don't forget that you need to make sure that your host and speakers are aware of what it is that you expect from your event. They have their own bias, which has an effect on how they design and run their sessions. Pay attention to your audience, as it can impact your attendance and engagement stats. Top five tips to make a connection online. In today's digital world, it's hard but not impossible to make connections with people. One of the major reasons that small businesses tend to get competitive is that they lose sight of the "grow together" mentality that America is built on. Additionally, in general, we tend to lose sight of the big picture. You should be treating your fellow online entrepreneurs like you would in the mom and pop shops in your local area. Therefore, why not step outside of your comfort zone and reach out to some like-minded business owners online? Talk about what they're doing to get customers in the door, and give them tips on what you're doing that's working for you. Discuss what you can do to build a business relationship and grow together. If you've been around for some time, you'll have some experience that you can share with them. You can also offer them some encouragement and allow them to teach you some new methods for marketing, as well as new tech and anything else they know about that you don't. In this tutorial, we'll discuss five tips to make a connection online. Utilize video chats. A few years ago, online relationships came with the stigma of the lonely kid in his parents' basement. However, this isn't the case anymore. There are many true friendships and partnerships that are coming out of online interactions. One great way to build these relationships is through video calls. Simply being able to hear someone's voice and see their face makes a huge difference in online relationships. When you meet via video chat instead of text chat, you create a much deeper connection because you can see their mannerisms and body language, and you can hear their tone of voice instead of just guessing. Make some time in your schedule to have video calls with your connections. It doesn't have to be anything major; just some time to interact and get to know each other. Join LinkedIn. One great way to branch out with new clients and relationships online is through LinkedIn groups. This will allow you to connect with the target audience, as well as expand your knowledge and converse with others in your industry. Another great way to build connections online is via LinkedIn articles. Write an article asking a critical question to encourage engagement from others. Share the article on LinkedIn and Facebook groups, or send it out to your email list to get the conversation going. Be sure to follow up with those who comment and build your connections from there. Reach out first. When working online, networking often feels strange or forced, but there are some ways that you can overcome the awkwardness. Start by reaching out to someone by commenting on a blog or social media post, or responding to an email. Mention something you like about them, the content, their business model, etc. If you would like to make a deeper connection, ask if they might be interested in a coffee chat, usually via video or phone if you're not in the same town, to see if there is anything you could collaborate on with each other. Typically, the hardest part of starting a relationship is that first contact. Most people do crave human connection, though. If you make the first move, you dramatically increase your chances of being able to talk to that person. Join Facebook groups. Take some time to join a few relevant groups on Facebook, and then engage as much as possible. If you're a member of a lot of groups, your attention will be split in that many directions, 
However, if you only have a few groups to focus on, you're able to create more quality connections. Connect on Instagram. Instagram is a great way to make online connections. Instead of going through and randomly following accounts, look for those that you really like in the hashtags. Then, leave meaningful comments on their content. If you interact with them, they are more likely to interact right back with you. This will help you build valuable connections, especially if you take the time to respond to comments and ask questions to start conversations. Conclusion These days, it seems that everyone has gone digital. This has made it difficult to build lasting connections. However, it's not impossible. If you use these tips, you can easily make lasting and valuable connections online with like-minded people. Virtual Networking Explained for Businesses A virtual network is a system in which companies and individuals can connect with each other despite local differences. This allows remote access of the system, which makes troubleshooting and repairing issues much easier. In this presentation, we'll discuss what virtual networking is and how it works for businesses. What is virtual networking? A virtual network is one in which all devices, machines, data centers and servers are connected via software or wireless tech. This means that the reach of the network can be expanded as far as required for maximum efficiency. A virtual network does not follow the conventional rules of networking because it's not wired. The devices on a virtual network interact via internet technology. This means that they have a much further reach than devices that are wired together. A virtual network is as limitless as the internet. This is sometimes referred to as NAAS or networking as a service. How does a virtual network operate? A virtual network uses innovative tech to create an expanded wireless network. This network includes vSwitch software, allows setup stroke configuration of a virtual network, virtual network adapter, this creates a gateway between networks, physical network, this hosts the virtual network, virtual machines, stroke devices, these are instruments that are connected to the network, allowing a variety of functionality. Servers, part of the infrastructure of the network host. Firewalls, stroke security, designed to monitor stroke stop security threats. Three virtual network classes. There are three classes of virtual networks. VPN, VLAN and VXLAN. We will explain these in detail. VPN, Virtual Private Network. A VPN uses the internet to link two or more existing networks. This allows users to log in from anywhere to gain access to the networks that are linked. VPNs can also be used to mask internet use on public Wi-Fi, which ensures secure browsing. A VPN is established when data that is attached to packets defines the routing information that routes a user to a certain address. This creates a tunnel of addresses which encrypts the browsing history and makes it impossible to remotely access information. A VPN offers a small-scale virtual network by the internet for people to connect. VLAN – Virtual Local Area Network a VLAN utilizes partitions to group certain devices on a LAN into domains that have resources stroke configurations applied to each one. A VLAN provides better management, security and monitoring of the devices stroke servers within a certain domain. VXLAN – Virtual Extensible Local Area Network a VXLAN provides a tunnel to a Level 2 network from your Level 3 network infrastructure via switches at each endpoint. Another piece of tech included in this network is a base case, either physical or virtual, that is able to route data between endpoints. Virtual networking for business has a variety of benefits, including the following. The ability to work remotely. 
digital security, streamlined hardware, flexibility stroke scalability. It doesn't require much hardware, which means it's easier to scale at a lower cost of ownership, cost savings, and increased productivity. Virtual networking and contemporary business. In the ever-evolving world of digital business, virtual networking is very important because it addresses the need for remote accessibility, scalability, security, cost savings, and flexibility. Just like most services that can be outsourced by enterprise businesses, virtual networking offers benefits, including ensuring that your valuable resources can be better spent, making sure that your tech meets your needs. As society continues to change to where more people are working remotely, virtual networking and NAAS services will become more critical for businesses to function. The next phase for digitally transforming businesses that have already become a virtual enterprise could very well be virtual networking capabilities. For example, Expanding your virtual network to encompass more than a simple VPN to increase productivity is one way that your business can evolve in the digital world. Conclusion: Virtual networking allows individuals within a company to connect with each other, no matter where they are in the world. This means that companies are able to be more productive, and troubleshooting, stroke repairing issues is much easier. Worst five faux pas to avoid when virtual networking. Whether you're just getting started in your new role or you've been around a few years, you know that a strong network is critical for your career. In fact, you've probably already been affected by a professional connection in some way. Connections are not only beneficial for mentorship and finding your next opportunity; they're also necessary for your overall health and well-being. For many years, most of us have considered networking as face-to-face -face conversations at events or gatherings. However, in today's world, that is changing rapidly. Virtual networking is becoming just as important as face-to-face -face networking. While there's really no right or wrong way to network, it's easy to make a few faux pas when connecting online. In this presentation, we'll look at five of the worst faux pas that must be avoided. When you are virtual networking, sending random LinkedIn requests. When you're attending a virtual networking event, don't automatically send someone a social media request to connect just because you like what they say. Take the time to talk with them and send them a personal message first. Be an individual, not just someone that clicks buttons. Making it all about new connections. While it's true that networking is about meeting new people and checking out opportunities for connection, you don't want to forget about your existing relationships. If you struggle with maintaining your current relationships, there's no reason to bother trying to build new ones. Not dressing appropriately. When you are planning to attend a virtual networking event, you need to think about how you would dress if you were attending that same event in person. Well, it's true that a lot depends on the industry you're in and the event that you're attending, but you're not likely to show up looking unkempt and dirty. You're probably going to make yourself look presentable. This is because you want to make a good impression. After all, although it's through video, people can still see you and will make judgments based on your appearance. Therefore, you want to make sure that you look the part when joining a meeting. Not solving technical issues. One of the primary issues that you're going to come across when it comes to virtual networking is having an unprofessional setup. If you're having issues, it's going to look bad on you. Before you log into the meeting, be sure that you test your setup and see if there's any issues that need to be resolved. You'll want to make sure that your microphone and camera are connected and functioning properly. You'll also want to ensure that your speakers are working so that you can hear everyone and that your internet connection is stable. Immediately cold pitching. When it comes to pitching your products or services, cold pitching is the same whether in person or virtually networking. If you jump right into a conversation where you're trying to make a connection via social media and you just want to sell your products or services, they're not likely to be interested in what you have to say. 
Instead, take some time to get to know someone and build a genuine relationship with them. No one is attending an event to be sold products or services that they're not interested in. They want to meet people who are real and can provide value to their lives. Conclusion Over the past several years, the world has moved more to virtual networking in lieu of face to face networking. However, there's really not much difference between the two. You need to be aware of what you're doing and how you approach meeting and connecting with others. Keep these most common faux pas in mind so that you can avoid them and be more successful when you're virtual networking.